Okay, so here is the part of the house that is not in a designated room, just in the living room. And we'll start with the iguanas, which is in this giant aviary. So the lightning isn't super great, but this is the giant aviary. So you can see this doorway right here is six feet high. And then the Todd is going to try to get out while I sit here and talk, but that's okay. So in here we have cohabbing, dun, 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 uh, cohabbing the green iguanas, the rhinoceros iguana, the redfoots, and boobob, the little Russian tortoise. So we'll start at the top and work our way down. So up here we have Azuli, who's been the star of a couple different ones. She is the Azanthic blue green iguana. So they're all green iguanas, as we've said before, but she is Azanthic, the blue uh, we know she's a girl between because of the you know the pores that she has on the back on her rear legs as well as she has laid a clutch of infertile eggs. Um, she hangs out up here with some UVB. Over here is Queenie, the monster who hates my guts. Uh, neither of these two ever have really tried to bite me, but they do like to tail up specifically Queenie. See there she goes. She does not really like me much either. But they have this whole big area up here of all these crisscrossing branches, and the rhinoceros iguana will come up here too. But she. Uh, spends a little bit more time on the ground. I should also mention that she does in fact have a name and I'll introduce her properly as soon as we get down to her. So UVB at the top because they need UVB, but as we all know, it doesn't really get that far. So we come down here to the tortoises. There she goes in the back. The tortoises UVB and heat. So here is the Todd. This is the Todd, the big male red foot. There is Betty, who is our female, who's laid quite a few eggs. Um, we bring and then Boabob over there in the corner. That is the little Russian tortoise because he is too small to go with the uh, Sulcata speed bump and the leopard tortoise pinecone. And he is too big to go with the baby Sulcata, who does not have a name. So he is in here with them, which works out pretty well for him. He does pretty good. And then Kaiju, the little female we we're pretty sure Renas is gonna, who we are still working on, uh, working on handling and taming down which most of the time is me just hanging out in here, but I did just clean out this entire thing for you guys because, I mean, yeah, we know that poop happens, but it's never great to just show off a dirty enclosure. Um, so she's not really happy with me at the moment. Normally I can come in here and she usually won't flip out, but that is the case at least at the moment. So here is the, yeah, big, the big cohabbing iguana cage with the red foot tortoises. Um, it gets frequent, uh, like the water changes if it's not dirty, which is, it is most of the time. It gets flipped over a lot. That water, which gets trashed very frequently, gets changed like three, four times a day. As like, at, literally I put them back in here about three minutes before I started this video and it's already dirty like that. Um, but any who's will be, uh, there's these guys and we'll move right along to the next ones in the cages in the living room. All right, we'll do this top to bottom, shall we? So here is Shoshone, we'll come right up here, there she is, um, who is our big female northern pine snake. Um, unknown locality and origins, but we do know she's a northern pine snake and she looks really good. Um, just changed up her enclosure. I normally would have a colubrid this size in a much larger enclosure, but when I put her in one, she got super defensive, very strikey, and stopped eating. So went back into this and she just does just fine. Um, just changed out her substrate. Here, we'll pop it open. Just changed this out to make it look a little bit au natural, which she has already tunneled through a little bit. You can see that hole right there through the substrate where she's tunneling around. A bunch of oak leaves and pine needles that have been baked through to sterilization. Um, plenty of places for her to climb up. So if none of you guys have heard me complain or mention it before, she loves to pull down her foam background. All of those chunks are spots where she's just ripped it out. Uh, yeah, Snake will do that. Hey Shoshone, how are you? So yeah, she's just sat there and ripped chunks out of this. So yeah, this is Shoshone, the girl that made me fall in love with uh, pits. Uh, got to start us with Moose and all of the other Pituophis and someday we'll have uh, as many of the pits as we can. Hi Shoshone, yeah, see, she's just so curious. I love them to death. They're so fun. So yeah, there you go. Here's, uh, you know, Shoshone's. And again, I would have her in a much larger enclosure, but when I tried, she, uh, yeah, she did not like it, but she likes to, she, I think she just likes to watch and see what's going on. She's very, uh, very nosy. She's a nosy Nelly. That's what she is. Okay, here, we'll close you up. Sorry, Shoshone. Zoom Ed. Enclosures. Why? I don't know why they're so terrible. 
Okay, this one. I have not talked about him a whole lot, mostly because he hates my guts. Um, and I do not claim really a whole lot of expertise faces uh, versus there's a lot of very good information out there. But who knows, maybe I'll do a full species spotlight on these green tree pythons for just some basic care. Um, but this guy doesn't have a name. He is our more than likely Bioc import uh, green tree python. Got him as a sub-adult. He's grown quite a bit since we got him a year or two years ago now, actually. Um, going on two and a half years, actually, now that I think about it. Um, but he is in here just in a nice little exoterra. This is probably the minimum size I would suggest for an adult green tree python. Couple perches so he can decide where he wants to be. Um, there's a lot of conflicting information about as far as like care as like humidity and water and stuff goes in here. Um, so I'm going to tell you how I do my little setup here. So up there we have a light. Um, there is a little bit of uh, plexiglass that covers a decent portion of this, not the whole thing, but a decent portion of that. And I have a small heat pad that's sitting right under that water dish. And all I do when it's not dirty, cause actually he doesn't really poop in the water too, too much, is I just flip the water dish over like two, twi two three times a week and just refill it up. And that's usually enough humidity for him. He's never had any issues shedding since I got him when he was in the gecko room. And then when I moved him out here, um, he's done just fine. We do know he is in fact a male because green tree pythons are one of the few species that you can actually tell the sex slash gender through their sheds. And it takes a few just to make sure, but he is in fact a boy. So there we go. There is the green tree python. Dun, dun, dun. Then I tried to do bioactive, but I couldn't get, um, the isopods in the springtail as well established. But this works pretty well in general with this nice little sub layer. Keeps it nice and humid in here. And so he's been doing just fine. But he is also grumpy with me, um, because I had to move this log. I did my best to scrub this way, and I'll probably take a little scrubby thing to this a little bit better. But that's what, um, he is not happy with me either. Moving right along down the road. We have, I'll just back up a little bit. This is just an empty skyscraper. I don't know what I'm gonna put in here. Um, originally I was gonna do like a mossy, uh, like a mossy leaf gecko, but it gets a little too warm in the living room in general. So I'm not sure what I'm gonna put in here. Maybe I'll do some like Amazon tree boas or maybe like a locality green tree python or something. I don't really know, but there's this really cool skyscraper. It has a deep enough bottom where I could make it into like a polydarium or something. But right now it's just collecting dust as storage for the time being. And then we move right along over to here for the rest of the oddballs and forgive my uh, reflection. So we'll see, we'll do this. She doesn't take a pop at me. She is also not super happy with me. So this is Juliet. She is our jungle carpet python. There we go, nice and focused in. Um, and again, I would honestly, most of the time for a full grown adult body pop, ball, <laughs> carpet python i would suggest something larger at least like a four by two enclosure someplace for them they like to perch but she really likes to perch i almost never find her on the ground unless she has ripped the back of this very nice custom background off the back and gets behind it and as you can see just like shoshone there are chunks where she's ripped it out and pulled it on that's the only time she's ever on the ground unless it gets like really cold and then she'll uh, huddle down on the ground. But otherwise she stays up in the tree and that's where she likes. We've put her in other enclosures. Um, she's turned her nose up from her meals once or twice doing that. So we just put her back in here. She likes to perch up. She likes to hang on to this big tree branch. She likes to hang up up here. Um, I will like flip this around and move it around slightly every time I uh, clean out and do like a full cage uh, rebuff. But She's just a little pouty at the moment, but this is her. She's also the one that once uh, knocked off an enclosure. So we had another one of these exoterras on top one time and she straight up ripped through this right here and knocked it off, set off our alarm system. I had to leave work to go figure it out what it was. Uh, we, and yeah, no, it was, it was not great. She, uh, she broke a brand new exoterra, which is why as much as I would love to put, um, some UVB on top of her, she is most comfortable in here, in this enclosure for whatever reason. I don't know why she just, she likes to perch. She thinks she's a chondro, I guess. Um, because she likes this enclosure, she likes to flip these off. So that's why we have this plywood here. So she can't do it. That's why we have this here with a nice, really deep, thick, um, heavy substrate layer. So she can't knock it off because she's a butthead and carpet pythons are very strong. Um, but they are good little snakies. Uh, so she can't do that. So that is why she doesn't have light in here, but everybody else in this place does. Um, and eventually I'll put lights in this cage as well, but I have not figured out exactly what I want to do, but that is the living room critters. And now we'll move on to, we'll do the arid room next. So we saw the gecko room in here. We saw the animals that are in our living room. 
Now let's go check out the Aaron room before we head downstairs. So we did recently just show the video of the Arid room in the continuous progress that we make around here anyway. Um, but so we're just going to kind of go through the species really quick. If I can show them off, some of them like to hide. Um, but we're just going to roll through it really, really quickly. So that way you don't have to hang around for another half an hour like the gecko room. So from the top, we'll start here and go around. Um, in this little cage, we have the Transpecos rat snake who likes to usually, lately, he's been, nope, not in there, but the Transpecos rat snake that he's right there. There he is. So that's our little Transpecos rat snake. He's het for Xanthic, het for blonde. Um, one of these days we'll pick up a girl for him. Um, I have a really bad habit of just getting single males because I like the species um, before I start doing pairs, which isn't always about breeding, but hey, why not contribute, right? Um, next down below, we have Rosie, the Arizona locality Rosie Boa, who just pooped in her cage because that's how it works, right? So honestly, I kind of want to give her a larger enclosure. We're just not able to quite yet, but I have things in the works. So we're working on that right now. But she's, you know, from fairly arid places in the United States. So that's why we have, again, the divided little thing of sand and that to give her a choice. Um, she usually doesn't hang out under her hide. She usually is either sprawled across there or rolled up right here. But I digress. Um, apologies for any background noises. This is like the loudest room in the house between the house hippos and the uh, tortoises speed bump. So this is our gray band king snake. There he is. As many of you have pointed out very correctly, he is a Blair's phase, not the Alterna phase, which I was told incorrectly by not only the guy that we got him from, but by a couple other people. But Blair's phase, Alterna, eventually looking for a female for him too. Well, since they're making noise, we'll just point them out right now. So these are the house hippos. Um, so the hairless guinea pig. So that's Tater Tot. The other one's Tilly. Um, she's in her little castle, but that's okay. So they're just in here because they're not able to regulate their body temperature as well. So they eat a lot to keep themselves warm and they can get hot really quickly too. So during the winter and the fall, they're in here. And then if it gets really hot, we'll actually take them out and have them kind of out in the middle of the actual house. But they're in here right now. Um, and the, why I have this hanging off over here is kind of weird. It looks like it's just like teetering, but there's a reason for it and we'll get there when we get there. So as we come along this way, here we have our baby corn snakes. So we showed off the video of a lot of the baby colubrids that we picked up, um, that they came all equipped, that they all came out of quarantine. A lot of them are a little bit bigger and can be put into the, uh, the 32 quart racks downstairs. These guys can't quite yet. Um, so here they are. Uh, this is the, I don't know, not sure where she went. She's probably hiding and buried under here. I like to give them lots of cover. There we go. Just the regular corn snake. And then the Amel or albino one. There she is. Boop. In here we have sand boas. Um, doo -ba -doo -ba -doo -boo -boo. This one's usually hanging out. No, nope, I'm not sure what that one might. But that's okay. There are Sambo's in there, um, which is totally fine. Um, up here, we have the African fat tail geckos. Um, so we've already done a little enclosure build for this one. I've updated it here and there as needed. Lots of places from the high because we kind of have a weird group. We actually have two males and one female. We thought we had a, a regular trio. And while 99% of the time, I would not recommend housing them like that because males can be very territorial um, and they can fight over each other and they can kind of torment the female. They've been doing just fine for two and a half years as full grown adults. So we still keep an eye on them. And that's why we give them lots of room in here like that. Um, down below, we have the baby sulcata tortoise. Now, as you can see, like his water looks absolutely terrible. And I'm going to admit that right now. However... I changed this water an hour ago. So anyone who keeps tortoises knows that's what it's like. This is a daily battle. I was gonna change it again right before we got going, but I'm kind of running out of daylight and it's gonna get dark in here. So I'm just gonna show you, like this is him. This is a very small enclosure and he will be moving to the larger enclosure with the other ones. I just want him to get a little bit more size because sulcatas can be kind of mean to each other and I don't want speed bump to do anything bad to him. Or I will just get another enclosure for him until he gets that big if they don't interact very well. Because honestly, I'm not a big fan of this 20-gallon tank for the size of a tortoise this big. But 
I just need to separate him from now. But eventually he'll be moving to something larger, or he'll be going into the enclosure with Speed Bump and Pinecone. Down below, we have our single Leopard Gecko. Um, she is the rescue that we picked up. Um, this is this the little 20-gallon tank for her. Um, again, I do the little split thing so she can choose. Um, usually in at night, she will cruise more or be hanging out over here. During the day, she's usually on this side, or when she's going into shed, she'll go into her little thing there. But she's doing really good. She does have pretty bad MBD, um, and you can't really correct MBD, but, you know, that's... You can you can help them along and do better. As you can see, she looks very healthy. Other than, like, right now, she just looks like a weird little leopard gecko that's just kind of curled up, kind of wonky. So up here we have, obviously, in shed, Moose, our elderly bull snake. Um, he's just an old dude. We love him. Yeah, I think he's, uh, he's really getting on in years. I'm not sure if this might be his last season with us, unfortunately. But that's how it works with animals, which stinks. But we love our Moosey boy. So he's just going to enjoy this nice, really cool setup for as long as we have him. Um, down below over here, we have the meanest snake that I ever have. Um, and when I say mean, I mean that she just legitimately hates me. Her head is actually over here. You can see her. Um, normally, she's out and about cruising and always wondering what's going on. But I was chasing her all around the cage to kind of clean up her poop because she likes to poop where she likes to bask. Um, and because she hates me and fights me and will scream at me, and yes, they scream at me, um, she likes to bask over here because I gave her a little spot. Um, this whole room is kind of ambient temperature in general, like 83.9 degrees. That's about 85 down to like 79. That's the ambient temp for this room. That's why it's the arid room where most of these guys are just kept on ambient temps and if it ever gets really cold then I'll add supplemental heat. Um, there's heat pads under several of the different species and there's like heat tape that's um, that I can add in or just add extra basking bulbs for the larger enclosures. But whatever that may be, um, this does provide a place to bask for her and she will come out especially in the mornings and she will come out and she will curl up on this more deserty sandy side and usually will lay the black part of her like the, her black head on top of that brock and usually while she's over there she likes to poop and so when i was cleaning that over where she just kind of cruised and shot all over the place which is why it looks a little detasseled and why she's pouting and hiding under her little log so down here as i mentioned in the gecko room part um this is where the timor monitor now lives normally these guys are yes they need higher temps because it's a monitor species which is achieved here plus he has the uvb and the basking up top but um, this is a much larger enclosure for the Timor, although the last couple days he's been spending a lot of time right here because he's weird. But that's him. Boop -a -doop -a -doop. Boop -a -doop -a -doop. See, that's him. Not exactly sure why he's doing it, but he can get out if he wants to. Silly boy. This is where Tegu used to live. Currently there's nothing in there. Um, haven't decided what we're going to put in there because we have a lot of things in the works. Things are always moving, always changing up. It even looks a little bit different in here from the time that we shot the arid enclosure tour in general, just because we we're always changing stuff and always trying to improve things. Um, over here, um, do -ba -do -ba -do. actually we're going to have our camera, our camera lady come up here and take a look at this top enclosure here, um, although he's probably hiding under there. So in this enclosure, and apologies for that metal creaking, this is actually our normal male ball python enclosure. Um, just so anyone doesn't think me a liar when I sit here and say that, you know, ball pythons deserve to be, uh, have more space than we normally give them, and we just do racks for breeding purposes. This is just our normal male ball python, Kalamazoo. He comes out for shows and uh, animal education things as an ambassador, but we don't breed him uh, because we actually acquired him as a part of a group as a female, possible head pied. Yeah, now he's a boy. And he's just a big, normal male, a pretty big one too, but he's usually under that black hide um, during the day and at night. He cruises all over the place and likes to yank down the cage surrounding his UVB bulb. Um, but in the morning, I'll come in here, and then if it's early enough, he's usually curled up on top of that under the UVB when it first kicks on. And then, and then during the day, he's just kind of, usually he's under one of the two hides, depending on if he's in shed or not. Um, and that's really it. Just to, you know, just to basically say, hey, I'm not a liar. If you have a bet ball python, leave it and give him, give him some more room. So this is Remus, our Aki monitor. That's him. He actually is the last animal that I still have a red heat bulb on. The rest have all been changed to ceramic. 
heat emitters or ambient temperature things. Um, just because I haven't quite gotten there yet. And again, I'm always still changing and doing things uh, differently. And things have just kind of taken a little bit priority more than that. Um, but we're working on it. We have the list. I have the bulb. I just need to get there in time. But Remus is a really cool boy. He doesn't have all of his little toe claws. Uh, but he still gets around pretty well. He makes a really cool little ambassador to show off because our bearded dragon and blue tongue skink are not as personable as him. Uh, but Warlock is coming along. So, and as you can see, he likes to just cruise over and make a mess of his enclosure. He even has torn down parts and bits of that styrofoam uh, background that I threw up as my first time trying to make a styrofoam background that did not go very well. Down below, we have Warlock, who is probably right there. No, I don't know where he is. Let's see. Is he right there? I'm not sure where he is. Let's see. Just come over here. There he is. There's little feeding dishes. So there's Warlock. He's our northern blue tongue skink. Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Um, he was, I've mentioned before, but he was attacked by a cat when he was still with his previous owner. He had surgery. He's healed up nicely. He's put on some weight again, but his jaw still looks a little bit funky. Um, but and he's coming along. He's a little not happy a lot of the time, but he's coming along too. And if you saw, it, I know the lighting's not great because I'm like in the corner right here because he's just propped up over there. Um, he does have that really cool blue tongue. Um, set this aside. We'll put that there for the time being. Down here we have the grumpiest bearded dragon in the world. Um, I usually just call her Miss Pissy Pants. She doesn't actually have a name. Um, she was given to us as just, hey... <laughs> You like bearded dragons, you had one that was a rescue and it passed away. Here's another baby bearded dragon. And I went, well, no, why? I don't know, I'm okay. I'm not actually the biggest fan of bearded dragons. But this is her. See, as I can see, as you can see, she's not the biggest fan. But with that being said, so as I mentioned before in the first setup in here, she does have a hot and a high spot, uh, a hot and a cool temper variant in here, radiant. I can't talk today, I apologize. But when she usually wants to kind of uh, not be really hot. So over there where that rock is, that's where she'll bask to warm up and when she's digesting food. But when she's just kind of hanging out during the middle of the day or usually in the evenings, she's up here on this choya wood and she'll just hang out there. Yeah, bearded dragons actually do like to climb and they will absolutely make use of perches if you give them a large sturdy enough perch. Um, you know, she's a female and she still has a little bit of growing to do, but this is still going to be big enough for her even at a full grown adult should be able to hang out in here. But I think this is a good size enclosure for just a single bearded dragon. Um, you could probably get away with like a 36, like one of the larger exoterras, but I think 4 by 2 enclosures are the way to go for these guys. But with that being said, we'll carry on with by Miss Grumpy Pants. So since I'm on the ground, we'll just go over here. So in this enclosure is just our Nelson's Milk Snake, doing this the old school way with a rock, right? Um, light on top. And again, this is just a juvenile milk snake. Oh, he's buried. I'm not sure where he is. I'm not going to dig for him too much if he doesn't pop up. There we go. Here we go. Just a little Nelson's milk snake. He's probably going to must all over me if I hold him out too long, but he has a really cool little aberration right there. And he's doing, yep, there he goes. Must have, eh, yep, see, musting all over me. But just a cool little Nelson's milk snake. I always love the tricolored snakes. That's why the fair eye that I have are the tricolors. And I've always just really liked them a lot. But I will stop bothering him and put him back and we'll carry on. Um, in this one, though, I'm not actually going to pull out because he really doesn't like it. Um, I mean, like, at all, at all. He really does not like it. And this is our sandfish. It's a type of skink. Um, yep, musting all over the pants. Gotta love that. Um... And he is a strictly insectivore, and he spends almost all of his time under the sand. Um, still give him a water dish, because I like to have water in most of the enclosures. It's not really a necessity for him, but I still just like to do it. You know, with the exception of, like, a Euromastix or something like that, where they legitimately cannot have higher humidities. Which, why, like, even in this room, the humidity is still, like, 30-something percent, which is even a little high for them. So, that's kind of why I don't have Euromastix. 
Um, but these guys, they're really cool. At some point, I'll do an actual species spotlight on this one, and I'll pull them out for that. But I already bought him this morning, so I'm just going to leave him alone. But this is a really cool stink, or skink. It's a really cool lizard. I think they're really fun. Um, but just showing up, I'm going through all the species. So that's this guy right here. Um, and then as we move up along the way, this is another recent one that we picked up from. I'm going to move these cactus because that's going to be bad. Um, vinegar water for cleaning. So this is actually a Colorado native, which Colorado kind of has weird things about their um, native laws, but we can have this one. This is a Woodhouse Toad female. They're pretty cool. She just likes to chill and hang out. Um, she's usually actually outside of her hide most of the time, but because I was like, okay, it's time to do the arid room part of this, and so I was moving around and cleaning things, and so she went and tucked in under there. But they're really cool, sturdy little toad. Um, I think they're really fun, kind of personable. They're fairly bold. And in this room, it works really well because they are native to Colorado and they can do the kind of higher temps. And because they're a toad, not a frog, they don't have to have as high of humidity and constantly be in the water. You'll find them just like out and about during like a 90 degree day at sunset. It's really weird. They're really cool and fun. Um, but moving right along, as I just continue to switch back and forth. Like I said, it's always work in progress. I apologize. I'm just, I'm full transparently showing you everything that I'm going along here. So not everything is perfectly clean. Um, in here, we have the Thayer's King Snake. So this was the video I did of the bioactive tub. Um, there he is. So the tricolor Thayeri. Um, the aloe plant is doing pretty well. And actually you can't really, there's a tiny little, it's growing a little, little nub right there. Um, it killed the little spider house plant thing um, that it had, but the uh, giant canyon isopods are doing okay-ish in this enclosure. Um, I need to keep a little bit more humidity on it in general. I haven't done the best job on this one, admittedly, but they are still propagating. They do still eat its sheds um, and a lot of its ex excrement as well. Um, I'm going to come in here and step in. So here's Speed Bump, the sulcata tortoise. Um, and then we have pine cone, the leopard tortoise with some obviously really bad pyramiding. Um, hence she's a rescue. Um, and these guys will be hopefully getting a large outdoor enclosure sooner than later. So we're going to come in here, hopefully not stepping on tortoise poop. Um, here we have one of our newest acquisitions that we picked up from our visit to reptile rapture, a European glass lizard or a legless lizard. They're super, super cool. Um, I love these guys. He has a weird little personality. He just likes to kind of sleep during the day and he just cruises all night long. But I, so that's why I usually try to feed him later in the evening where the rest of the guys I try to feed in the middle of the day because otherwise, you know, they won't metabolize their food very well. Um, cause they need that temperature to kind of do that. Otherwise you can, you know, it can lead to bad things, but he's a really cool little dude and I would super look forward to it. We're still working on handling with him. Um, he's not really nippy, but he's very, very squirmy. So working on him, but we'll do a species spotlight about him along the way. And down here, another famous one on our website or YouTube channel is O'Malley. There's his face. Um, and as you can even see, even though I cleaned it this morning, he's already thrown all of this along the side, uh, all of this along the side, apologies, um, from when I changed his water. So this enclosure, I originally did one of the little divided thing. And as you can see, it didn't really work out very well. He threw it all over the place. So basically I just took out the plastic thing and I just kind of mix it up a little bit. And I still try to keep this more sandy and more wood and, and eco earth, but it just kind of all get mixed together, which is, it works for him in general. He's a hungry little food motivated king snake. He's a really, really cool little dude. Let's see if we can't get him to focus on that. There we go, that looks a little bit better. Um, really caught up nicely. He got out for a long time and he was kind of stunted in growth, but he's definitely caught up and now he has a much better weight and size to him. And then, so while I'm standing in here, hopefully not again stepping in tortoise poop, you can see that like my tortoises are pain in the butts. They don't like to eat even like the Maserai prepared commercial tortoise food. They like to eat fresh greens, which is, can get pretty expensive after a while, especially when it's not just like lettuce. Lettuce doesn't really do much for them. So they actually need greens and vegetables and things like that. But they also, because they are these dry plains, arid tortoise species, grasses make up a huge portion of their diet, which is what's in that prepared diet. 
So what we do is we put grass and hay in here for them because the guinea pigs love to eat that too. And when I stuff it in here, it just falls down when I throw in piles of hay for these guys to eat as well because now they do eat the grass as well, which was a whole thing that they basically like sat there and food protested at me like a ball python because they didn't want to eat the grass. I'm like, tough, you need to eat it. You can't just have the greens. So that's why it's kind of like teetering off to the side like this. So that way when I give them this, they can have that. And when I'm feeding them the fresh veggies, I can throw a couple to them too. So this is the, so this is the arid room. That's all the species in here. It's not really like big, big full tour, but you know, I, you know, I just want to, want to show off. It was asked for, and I'm going to deliver because that's what I like to do. Um, again, it's not going to stay this way. We have a lot of things in the work and hopefully it'll get better, but that's all the species in here. Now we're going to head down to the room that probably has the least amount of species, but has the most amount of snakes. It's the main snake breeding room. So let's go check that out.